Imagine yourself seeing the world this way. Life becomes difficult with such vision for a person diagnosed with keratoconus. As refractive surgeons, we routinely see keratoconus patients who are frustrated using glasses and contact lenses and desire a permanent solution. Aim of the treatment is to stop the progression of disease followed by a refractive correction. Many modalities available today may help achieve this. Let us review the existing treatment for keratoconus and their pros and cons. Collagen crosslinking or C3R has been approved as a safe and effective treatment to hold the progression of keratoconus, but it alone may not be sufficient to provide good functional vision. Hence, combination modalities have come into practice to deal with the refractive error after C3R in progressive keratoconus. Topo guided PRK combined with sequential or simultaneous C3R has also shown to improve refraction. It does so by removing tissue from an already ectactic cornea. Epithelial removal may cause patient discomfort, delayed healing, haze and infection. Intracorneal ring segments cause significant reduction in keratometry and flattening, but risks such as perforation, extrusion, misalignment and infection cannot be ruled out. One may opt for phacic IOLs once keratoconus is stabilized, but even they have their own set of demerits. We felt it's always not about fixing something broken, but we may also start all over and create something better. We worked on a novel concept of tissue addition for keratoconus and found encouraging results. Let us see how this treatment works. Recently it was shown that tissue addition using cryopreserved Relax Smile lenticules can be used for treating hyperopia and its safety in six month follow up has been established. We thought it may also be possible to apply this novel concept for potential management of keratoconus. In this procedure, a cryopreserved lenticule which is extracted from a Relax Smile donor is used. The lenticule to be implanted is selected on the basis of spherical equivalent of the recipient eye after ruling out axial myopia. The lenticule is thawed, washed and prepared for implantation. Tissue is placed on Teflon block and a 3 mm corneal trephine is used to punch the center, creating a donut shaped lenticule. Once the tissue is prepared, eye is docked to the patient's interface on the femtosecond laser to create a pocket at 100 microns depth. This pocket is then dissected with a blunt spatula. This is followed by injection of 0.25% riboflavin dye and allowed to soak for one minute. The lenticule is then inserted into the pocket with the help of two micro forceps. Gently manipulated, adjusted and aligned to the center of the pupillary axis of the eye. Interface is washed with saline and eye is exposed to ultraviolet, a radiation at 30 milliwatts per centimeter square for 3.3 minutes to deliver a total energy of 6.3 joules. Topical steroids are prescribed for 3 months in tapering dosage. In keratoconus, there is progressive ectasia of central part of cornea, leading to myopic astigmatism. This causes a hyperprolate shape of cornea, which is associated with significant higher order aberrations, affecting the quality of vision. The topography of a cone in keratoconus consists of a steep central and relatively flatter mid peripheral part. Addition of a donut-shaped lenticule to the mid-periphery causes steepening in the corresponding zone and relative flattening of the center. This changes the shape of cornea from hyperprolate to a more natural prolate shape, thus reducing higher order aberrations and improving quality of vision. Moreover, addition of natural corneal tissue 
improves thickness of cornea and combination with accelerated cross-linking freezes the final shape and potentially halts the progression of keratoconus. In our experience of seven eyes of six patients, there was a reduction of mean keratometry, which also reflected as reduction in astigmatism and improvement in visual acuity. The lenticule remained clear and well-centered in position and did not show any shift with time. Complications such as haze, deep lamellar keratitis, infection or immunological rejection did not occur at the end of six months follow-up. Stromal demarcation line at three months was seen at around 200 microns, after which it could not be appreciated well. A decrease in post-operative Q value and corresponding reduction in higher order aberrations was also noted, which resulted in improvement in the quality of vision. Central epithelial thickness was seen to be increased due to compensatory epithelial hypertrophy without a significant change in epithelial thickness around the cone. Corneal biomechanics study suggested reduction in deformation amplitude, possibly indicating an increase in corneal stiffness. However, we do see some limitations with this new technique. At present, it has been tried only in mild to moderate keratoconus with central cones on topography since results may not be predictable in advanced cases and nomograms need to be refined for better predictability. Nevertheless, our limited experience with this new technique suggests that tissue addition combined with accelerated cross-linking may be a feasible option to treat keratoconus owing to potential advantages such as improvement in corneal shape, thickness, reduction of aberrations, no deepithelization, extrusion, perforation, infections, low risk of immunological rejection, and reversibility of the procedure. However, longer follow-ups are required to establish the long-term safety and efficacy of the procedure.